The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and Smithsonian Center for Education and Museum Studies. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Grace Graham began teaching photography at Montgomery College in the fall of 2002 and art history and art appreciation in 2004. Her continuous exploration of innovative methods to engage students brought her to the Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship. A native of Dallas, Texas, Grace has lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, Philadelphia, and Chicago before moving to Maryland. She spent over 20 years in corporate marketing before returning to school to study photography and art. Through the years, she has participated in local photography exhibits. Her passion centers on capturing the essence of textures and abstract forms. Grace earned a BS degree from Southern Methodist University and a master's degree from Santa Clara University. Good, thank you so much for coming. And I, uh, I'm, I'm glad to tell you about the journey that my students and I took this last semester. But sometimes I wonder why or how I get myself into certain things. And sometimes I can figure out the how of it, but the why is a little elusive. And this project was one of those times. When I first applied, which is, as you all know, long before you actually do it, to the, um, the fellowship, I thought I would implement the project in Art History II class, which covers the same time frame from the Renaissance to the modern day, and so I was going to look at the evolution of American art as connected to but separate from European art. But then, in the summer, um, there was a, one of the faculty went on medical leave, and there was a big shuffle of courses, and the next thing I knew, I wasn't teaching art history too, I was teaching art appreciation and digital photography. So I thought, that's okay, that's fine. I can do this in an art, in a art appreciation class. Art appreciation is a class that students take because it meets a dis uh, the arts distribution requirement. And um, they generally don't want to, and I am quoting, do art. So they take art appreciation. And a lot of them have not taken a, an art class since elementary school. And so there's a pretty high level of resistance to the subject matter. So engaging them in the first place is, is a really tough challenge. So, the, and the project, the class always ends with a major paper. You go to a museum, you write a, an analysis of a work of art. Um, so, at first I could have just done that. That would have been okay. They're already going to the museum. But then I thought, that's not much of a challenge for me. So I decided that I would um, have them find a work of art that um, represented their idea of American culture and how they fit into American culture. So it had to be personally, so they would make that personal relationship. So that's what I did. They, um, in order to make that connection, they had to find a work of art and write this, a formal analysis paper. And I could have left it there and that would have been fine. But as I was going through thinking about the museum visit that we would go to and how we would reach this conclusion, I thought, you know, I should actually invite my photography students to go to the museums because that way they'll see more works of art and they'll, it will stimulate their uh, creative compositions, which are often a challenge in introductory photography classes. But then I thought if I did that, they won't go. I'll invite them and they'll say, yeah, and they won't go. So I'll have to require them to go. So th then I thought, well, if I really want to stimulate their comp compositional efforts, then I really should require them. So maybe I should just have them have one of their portfolio images reflect their idea of American culture and their place in it. And at that point, I thought I might be a little crazy. But I asked a very wise person about this, and uh, I was encouraged to just, just go for it. So I went for it. And I, I mapped out these museum visits, and I went way overboard on this. But w when you're in this fellowship, you go downtown every week. And over the summer, I went down as many times, if not more. So by the time in August, I was used to just going on the metro. I knew all the places to park. So I came up with these uh, museums. And I figured every three weeks, we'd have a visit, and there would, we'd go to five. 
there would be the national, and we start with the two cultural ones, the History Museum, the American History Museum, and the American Indian Museum. And then we would spend the rest of the time with the art museums at um, the Smithsonian, at the uh, American Art Museum, and the Portrait Gallery, the Hirshhorn, and the National Gallery of Art to round out the whole thing. Um, so that's, that, and that's kind of what we did. Or that's what I was going to do, but, um, oh, oh, and then I broke my policy about extra credit and decided I'd give them a little extra credit if they went to all the museums. They only had to go to two, but if you went to more than, one, more than two, you got a little bit of extra credit, enough that it would take you over if you were on the margin of the class. So that was the plan. But then, and this has just totally amazed me, the enrollment in my class is doubled. So when I made this plan, which was like on a Thursday, the uh, attendance, I mean, the enrollment was less than 30 between both classes. So it was very manageable. By the time school started, which was Tuesday, the, the, it had doubled and I had nearly 60 students. And so that was a, a, that was, that was a sign. Anyway, well, we went right on ahead. So the first thing we did is we went to the National um, American History Museum and we saw, um, and there, there's a bunch of my students right there, taking a look. We went to the Star Spangled Banner exhibit because I wanted them to see the flag that inspired the national anthem and also see how close the country came to almost not existing at all. And then we went to the Greensboro Lunch Counter and then we went to the fabulous exhibit of uh, Changing America, the Emancipation Proclamation and the March on Washington. And then I, they were encouraged very strongly to go see America on the Move, the transportation exhibit, the First Ladies, which is mostly their clothing, and the, uh, the, the food exhibit. Some of them found the door, but that was the idea. So that was fun. And then we kept along on this pace, and then we went to the, uh, a few weeks later, to the American Indian Museum. Uh, and we saw the Our People's Exhibit, which is just this wonderful exhibit with the, all about the Colombian Exchange, and with the wall of gold and the wall of uh, swords and the wall of guns and the wall of Bibles, kind of all in the same place. Uh, and then we also went and saw the um, introductory film, which is just absolutely fabulous. So that was cool. And we're on a roll, and things are manageable. But then the government shut down. Are you kidding me? It's okay. It'll only be a couple days, right? Uh, it went on for, as you all know, for way too long, and it, it ruined my plan. Uh, so I had to throw out a museum, and I ended up tossing out the, the Hirshhorn. And, but I had this whole thing with the extra credit, so I ended up counting the National Portrait Gallery and the American Art Museum as two visits, even though technically, in my mind, it was only one. Uh, but because I counted it twice, I have a huge attendance. So that was good. So we went down there, uh, but before we did that, let me give you some, in, it, what we did in the meantime and throughout the semester was how do you define culture? So in addition to the entire curriculum, I had to stuff this in, in between. Um, so we had a lot of discussions, we had a lot of cultural discussions, almost every class there was something that was alluded to. So I might ask questions like how would you describe American culture, that was kind of the obvious question. Um, or what part do you play in American culture? Like, do you, do you, are you a skateboarder? Then, you know, then yeah, that's part of your thing. Something like that. I'd have to try to dig it out of them so they would think about it. Um, we had a, watched a bunch of short videos. I, I accumulated a bunch of them. Uh, the longest one was 10 minutes. Some of them were one minute, three minutes, really short. And some of them the students found, some of them the, the cohort members found. Uh, so we, in, in each one, they had some connection to culture and Amer America, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I also told any anecdote I could think of, you know, like, on the way here, I heard on the radio, blah, 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 and, and then I would say, you know, what does that mean? Um, but this is my favorite. I found this magazine, by Time Magazine, of, of 100, the 100 most influential people that never lived. And it was a whole, it's a whole magazine dedicated to all these people, many of them characters in movies or books or on the screen, or just um, people like... Betty Crocker, who were very influential, but they never lived. And then, so then that would be my question. You know, what does this say about American culture? And it was all, I, asked, I must have asked that question 30 times throughout the whole semester. So it was kind of fun. Um, it, same thing with any sort of current event. Uh, we'd go on the internet, we'd look at images. Like the day there were uh, shots at the uh, Capitol, we went on the internet in my class that night and looked at images of it and, and sort of things. So as much as I could force into 
everything else I was doing, I, I tried to do. Um, and then we also prepared for the museum visits. And after they f went to the museum, in order to get the credit, they also had to write a short reflection paper on it. Uh, but one of the things that we did, the, the most extensive, was for the American Indian Museum. And each table in the classroom got a question and then answered. So one of them was, how is your life affected by Native Americans? Most common answer, not much. Really? Try living without corn. So that was the kind of things that we talked about. Or how many rivers can you name that have Native American names? Really? How about the Mississippi? Okay. So that sort of thing. So that was the kinds of things that we did. Anyway, finally the government uh, reopened and we went, and we, off we went. Uh, spread over the two weekends to the two museums, the Smithsonian Art Museum and the National Portrait Gallery. And there we saw uh, several different exhibits while we were going in, and I will show you some of the images from it. But we started on the 19th century with the landscapes, where also there was a landscape, three landscape photography shows. Uh, and we went to modern contemporary art, the American project, we went all over. They were exhausted, um, but it did count double. So if, the first day we went, we, and both times we gathered in the courtyard, but the first weekend that we went, it was a, day, it was a little added bonus, Day of the Dead celebration, so that was kind of fun and, and uh, very cool. Um, and there's just some pictures of them wandering around. On the, I guess it's your left. The uh, are the two of the photography students, and on the right are two uh, art appreciation students uh, in the portrait gallery. And then um, the, the favorite one favorite part was in the contemporary art exhibit in the in the art exhibit. <clears throat> and on the left is the Dwayne Hansen piece of the woman eating, in which my art appreciation students had talked about a lot about his work, and I told them they would see one of his pieces there, but I didn't tell them where. And every single one of them were completely fooled by him, so that was cool. And this one on the right was also a, a enormously popular thing. And then from there we went down and saw the Democracy of Images photography show that, is, uh, that was there at the time. And finally, uh, just a couple weeks after that, we went to the National Gallery where we took a very brief, a very quick and brief tour of Western art from the Renaissance to the modern day with this particular emphasis on looking for the photography students, looking at painting before and after the introduction of photography so they could see how, the, how it changed. Uh, and that was our um, whirlwind tours of the museums. Anyway, I wanted to show you a couple of things of, of the results. But before we talk about that, I wanted to, well, suddenly it was December and everything's due and I had a huge pile to grade, which I did. But anyway, I want to show you a little side thing because this I really, really hoped for and did not anticipate getting. But in um, the introductory photography classes, when they do take, uh, create a portrait or, or take a portrait image, it, the tendency is to put the person right in the center of the picture frame, usually seated, usually with, you know, showing the arms but cutting off the hands with a bunch of empty space behind their head or a bunch of clutter. And I said I don't want any images that look like Facebook icons when you don't have a profile picture. And I, I was emphatic about it, but, but that's why I made him go to the, the, uh, you know, see the presidential portraits. So I just want to show you some, and there's only a few, of the portraits that resulted out of this, which is why my current photography class is going back to the portrait gallery this semester. Edward took a picture of his uncle. Uh, Melissa took a picture of her new, very newborn niece. She was in the delivery room, and she took that uh, photograph. Christina took a picture of her daughter for her a portrait assignment, but for her portfolio, she turned in a picture of her son with a, a, trying to, a three year old son trying to manage a, her old camera. Um, <clears throat> Lynn took a picture of her brother. Nasumi took a self portrait. And Han took a picture of his friend riding in a car, which is cool. But anyway, back to the assignment. The art appreciation assignment was. was I will confess, rather complex. They had to find the item, they had to write the visual analysis part, which was the most important part of their grade. 
uh, in the formal analysis, we have to talk about how the artist uses line and shape and color and value and texture and space and, and organize it to re achieve unity and balance and so forth. They also had to do biographical research on the individual artist, and they had to explain uh, what the peony or whatever the work was, you know, explain it, and and how it represented American culture to them. And to make it even tougher, I said, really don't want to see a bunch of uh, double-spaced, one-inch margin papers. You got to add some pizzazz to it, make it look like an article in a newspaper. So they weren't happy about that, but they did. Um, so here's some of the things people wrote about. Which, oh, one, of course, is a woman eating. Several people wrote about that. But what Allie said, I think, really struck me. She said, the image of this overweight woman eating ice cream and looking so lonely and sad said a lot to me about how life in the United States is for those who are not rich or beautiful. I should mention Allie is extraordinarily thin and really quite pretty, but she, uh, she still identified with that. I thought a lot of people would write about Miss Liberty from the uh, Smithsonian Art Museum, but actually only one person wrote about it for their paper, and that was um, Genesis. And she said, American culture is embracing the freedom and diversity of this nation and admiring the many talents within varying categories, such as beauty, art, knowledge, music, entertainment, advancement, and so much more. And then later she said, my place in American culture is to use my freedom to make something of myself and to hopefully move up in society and to help my family. Another one, Rebecca wrote about a piece that she, she found at the um, American Indian Museum, which uh, it's a Hyde painting and it's, it's showing the ceremony that the um, children of the tribe would go through when they reached puberty. And she related that to her experience growing up, and, and, she, and she's Jewish, so the whole bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, and then as well as the sweet 16 type of parties that we have in this country. And she said this, I believe American culture means fast and creative living. Everyone seems so busy to get to where they are going instead of soaking in where and what they are doing now. Through our, through our, though our American culture exceeds in innovation and creativity, when put into perspective, it really compares to nothing that the Native Americans did that can be seen in their own museum. I thought that was pretty cool. On the photography side, um, Oh, wait, I forgot about this one. This one, Doris wrote about the Greensboro Lunch Tower. And when I saw that paper, I thought, oh, dear, because it's not really a work of art. It's an exhibit at the museum. But she actually wrote about it as an exhibit, you know, and how the Smithsonian set it up and, and all that. So I let it go. But she said this, when I was taking a picture of the exhibit, I saw my reflection in the mirror, and I realized it could have been me. And then she goes on to talk about the prejudice that she had experienced in her life and how she hopes for two-year-old daughter um, only has to read about it in history books. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, the photography assignments, they had to produce 10 pictures over the, the course of the semester and show them uh, in a formal setting at the very end. And they had a landscape or cityscape, of a broad view, a still life thematic arrangement of things, a portrait, the capturing motion, quality of light, a street scene. Uh, they had to restore a photograph, create an image from many different images, and they had two choices that they had to put in there. Um, and any of those, it didn't matter which one to me, could be an example of American culture. So one of the ones that came up was Caleb. He was the one of the first to find was he, he was real excited because he found this old piece of wood that was painted like the American flag. And while he was looking at it, a hawk came along and was flying there. So he thought that was really cool. I, I thought that was cool, but I didn't quite understand how it was related to him until I saw his still life, which was about hunting, and then I got it to why he was in the woods in the first place. So that, that was Caleb. Joanne uh, grew up on a farm in rural, Amer in rural Maryland, and so for her, American culture was all the rural aspect that, you know, that most of us who live in the city don't really appreciate. Um, Han, who came to America one week before school started from Korea, was extraordinarily excited about cars. And American, America and the, and the obsession with cars and working on cars, everything about cars. So he had a few images about cars, but that was his. 
Um, Eric, on the other hand, doesn't have a car. He rides the metro all over the place, and so he in tr in public transportation. So he he really got into the metro, and he particularly liked it because there's a little uh, AT and T half of the AT and T logo at the top of the escalator, and he has a smartphone, and so then he works at Best Buy, and it was all there. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> Cholam, who came from uh, China like, maybe 40 years ago. Um, and apparently, he drives all the time. That's the way he views his life. I drive everywhere. I just drive all the time. And so to him, um, not only does McDonald's, but a McDonald's that's open 24 hours that you can drive through, it couldn't be beat, and then at the Exxon and the construction sign, which in, he felt reflected his life. Edward, who came from Russia just about three years ago, uh, went to New York City over Thanksgiving, and he thought that, um, or he found that Times Square just really set it off, you know, with all the lights and all the media and all the advertising and all the sort of like consumption and all the cars and all the taxis and all the people, and it doesn't really matter whether you're rich or poor or anything about you, everybody goes to Times Square. So that was his uh, image. The, the weekend before, the Sunday before he went on this trip to New York City was the day that we, the last museum visit to the National Gallery. And after, when we were done in the afternoon, um, I went and sat on the steps outside, even though it was freezing, because I wouldn't eat my sandwich. And the sun, it was, it was a beautiful sunset. 4.30 in the afternoon, but a beautiful sunset. But Edward, who was much more energetic than I was, went to the Capitol and took this picture, which I have to admit was probably the best light I'd seen on the Capitol in a long time. Um, the same weekend, Ramon also went to the, who he, he went to all the exhibits, all the museums, but he went to the National Gallery and he wrote his paper about a piece he saw there, and this is his conclusion. He said, looking at art made me think. It made me interpret, and most importantly, it made me be more open-minded to what it is to be American. We come from a land of progression, a land of being free where you can chase your dreams and even be remembered in a museum. And that is why I get myself into these things. Thank you.